Now we're finally at the point where we can actually successfully start scaling performance max campaigns because as of recently performance max campaigns have been the talk of the town. I mean, I just recently released a blog post on my agency website, Euro Marketing, which went over in detail performance max campaigns during that time period. However, I was testing a lot with performance max just trying to kind of figure out exactly how it works, trying to figure out what Google is saying about how it works in the back end and actually kind of understanding based off of the performance of certain performance max campaigns we currently have running for a brand and now thankfully the time is to scale those performance max campaigns but now the question arises which is how do you exactly scale a performance max campaign and that too the right way without really messing things up because for all of you that know what a performance max campaign is it's in short words a campaign which basically deprives you of all of your rights and doesn't really give you the ability to look Look too deep into the details because that's just how a performance max campaign is there's very little things you can actually control compared to a smart shopping campaign or a standard shopping campaign but as you see right here on my screen we're looking at a specific ad account which is actually a student's ad account who i was actually offering mentoring with and this student started the store back in july when we started mentoring first so it's been about one year almost since this account has been running so far if we look at all time for this ad account we will be able to see that exactly with my strategies the student has been able to spend about 54,000 Canadian dollars because the student does live in Canada but runs the store in the US he has been able to generate about half a million Canadian dollars within a year's time period absolutely insane results that too at a 8.45x ROAS so I'm very happy with the student's success because not only are these strategies which he's implementing on his ad account the same that I teach on my YouTube channel and on my Google Ads Mastery course but also those that I implement on my e-commerce clients under my agency Euro Marketing. But for today, we're going to be focusing on not all of these campaigns, but these two specific campaigns which the student currently has running within his ad account. And as you can see, all these other campaigns which are at the top, they say shopping upgrade available, which clearly means that these are not performance max campaigns. They're just regular smart shopping campaigns. And in fact, this one, which I just checked is a single product ad group campaign. That's a standard shopping campaign. But what I want to kind of focus on now is these performance max campaigns. First things first, the reason why we have two different performance max campaigns running here is because this strategy follows what I mentioned in my earlier video on how to launch performance max campaigns the right way. You want to either launch them within certain categories or collections, or you want to have some kind of similarities for the products which go inside these performance max campaigns. For this account, this student decided to launch these performance max campaigns based on their niches. So these two have products within their own niches. And of course, for his privacy, I'm not going to mention which niches they are in, but it is a general store. And as you can see, both performance max campaigns are providing varying different results. And that just tells you that not every campaign can necessarily be scaled and not every campaign is scalable in the long run. But of course, we're going to only be mostly focusing on this campaign right here, which has the 10 sales and is doing extremely well. I mean, if you look at the ROAS, it's a 5.77 and everything just seems to be working fine. It has been running for a decent time period and this time period is enough to now go in and basically start the scaling process. Before we actually dive deep into the scaling process, let's take a step back and look into exactly how this campaign was created because I'm sure a lot of you have questions as to why this campaign is so successful and how this was actually set up. So first things first, looking at the right side, obviously this is blurred out for you, but there's different assets running within this Performance Max campaign. If we go on over to the asset group set, Section, we can see that overall there's about 20 different images for this asset one logo four different headlines four long headlines and five descriptions so in total as you can see my student did an amazing job of using all of Google's advertising space available to really push all of these images headlines descriptions etc into this performance max campaign to give it the best possible results and to let it really reach its full potential because again a performance max campaign really deprives us of a lot of our control that means Google's algorithm is fully in control in a lot of different things here and we have to do our best job possible to support applied as many headlines as possible, as many descriptions, as many images that of course 
relate to our brand. And this is exactly what my student did right over here. As you can see, even though this is a full on collection based performance max campaign, all of the images, which you of course aren't going to be able to see because this is for privacy sake, but all of them are very broad images, nothing too specific regarding the collection itself, but just very broad. Like for example, one of the images says, welcome, we're glad you're here. But of course the background is showing a bunch of different products and it is sort of a scenic image. The next one, it just says weekly deals and it has a picture of a person standing there pointing at a shopping cart. Very simple, nothing too crazy. All of these images just kind of go very, very broad and talk about the store as a whole rather than the collection. But I do recommend that you for your images go in and actually make them based around the collection. So for example, if you're selling perfumes, of course, you want to speak a little bit more about perfumes in these images that you put for the performance max campaign, especially if the collection you're targeting is also directed towards perfumes. You can have a variety of different perfumes all lined up in a very scenic environment for the performance max campaign. You can have somebody holding a bottle of perfume or just you can go crazy, but have up to 20 different images because that is what I'm seeing working the best for a performance max campaign. Anything between about, I would even say 15 to 20 is ideal for images. Logo, just keep it to one headlines and descriptions. Really just keep it around four to five. Don't go too heavy because with a budget of $30 a day, Google was able to really find the best performing asset groups in this, meaning all the images and the headlines, etc., combined together. But of course, this is because this store has over half a million dollars worth of sales data. That's why it's a bit easier. And also because the next thing which we'll be covering is the audience signals. So one thing that I recommend for you guys to do as well, which my student did here, and also something I'm doing with my e-commerce clients under my agency, Yoro Marketing, which if you're really in the need of help right now to scale your brand, if you're already doing $30,000 or more in sales, and you would just need a little bit of extra help to take your brand to the next level with Google Ads, maybe through Performance Max campaigns, maybe through other smart shopping campaigns, go on to my website at yoromarketing.com and book a free call with me to see how we can possibly work together and make that happen. But what I did for a lot of my clients, as well as what the student did is, he added audience signals. So so if you click this pen button right over here and on your end, you can do the same thing. This audience signal section will open up and within this audience signal section, it will let you kind of add different audience signals up. And what I recommend you do is first, you add all the audience signals which you already have data for. So what my student did here is he added all the visitors to his website, which is the first signal. Second one, shopping cart abandoners. Third one, product viewers. And I was a little bit surprised that this actually ended up working because again, this is a general store. It has a lot of varying data. It might not necessarily have to work too great, but I'm surprised it did. And this just kind of verifies my doubts that Performance Max is indeed very smart if you kind of provided enough data, if your account already has the data to support it. But he did not stop there with all of the abandoned cart audiences and all of the other warm and hot traffic audiences. He also added more interest and detailed demographics, which I can't really show you, which is very, very broad. As you can see, he's targeting sports and fitness, exercise equipment, sporting goods, because of course the niche that he is targeting here is based around sports and fitness. So because he's adding all of these in-market segments in, it's making Google's life easier to actually go out within this audience segment and find the right kind of audiences. And combining that with his previous data, it just makes it a very wonderful combination, which I also recommend you do. But I'm going over this because this is extremely crucial to finding that initial success you need to then get to the level of where you're actually thinking about scaling your performance max campaign. Because yes, all of these things within the asset groups are contributing to the success of the student's performance max campaign. Moving on now to listing groups, what he did over here is nothing too crazy. He basically has all of the products within that specific niche selected right over here. And it's one basic collection, but then all of these products are distributed into different categories just because that niche, which is sports and fitness is very big and he has different segments of those products on his store, which is why he needs to have multiple different listing groups. But as you can see, nothing too crazy going on over here. That's basically all he has. But that is also what I recommend you do in order to kind of scale your performance max campaign further. If you want to continue the success of whatever your performance max campaign is achieving right now, try to add more products within the same niche or same collection as much as possible because just launching one performance max campaign for one product or two products is not really going to be ideal because again 
a performance max campaign has a lot of things to test and it also actually tests a lot of these products individually so if you don't have any real winning products within a performance max campaign it might be hard for you to find any success with a performance max campaign so what i recommend is whatever niche or collection you do decide on for that performance max campaign just go all in and submit as many products as you can within that niche and collection which of course you can source and just add them to this one performance max campaign and make this your testing performance max campaign for that given niche or industry that is exactly what the student is did right over here but one good thing he does is he continuously adds more and more products weekly and that is contributing to his success over time because once products die out because again a performance max campaign is not magic it's not gonna just let a product run forever the, each product has its own lifespan and once it dies out a new product doesn't need to replace it which in a performance max campaign sake will automatically be done if you just have it already within the listing groups in the first place but Moving on now to the setting section, because this is where the real skill happens. By now, we already discussed asset groups and speaking specifically about it, some of the better ways to scale within asset groups is by adding more assets. So for example, if you have some assets within here, like images, logos, descriptions, headlines, even videos, and they're just not really providing you good CTRs, meaning your overall performance mass campaign CTR is not too high. I recommend one way to scale is by adding more assets, meaning having different styled images added, different styled descriptions added, headlines added, etc. And this is just going to kind of scale your campaign up in the sense that now it has more things to test around with and your search campaigns are going to do much, much better. And if they do well compared to before, Google will start to show them more and more to the bigger audience segments because your quality score will increase in the long run so that's one way to scale a performance max campaign just add more asset groups but only do this really if your performance max campaign has good ROAS but the CTR is not really up there and I recommend the same for audience signals if you have a performance max campaign doing well you want to scale it further just add more audience signals maybe you want to add more warm traffic or hot traffic audience signals maybe you want to add more in market segments or affinity segment just targeting cold traffic either way is good to go i do recommend you do each of these scaling methods one at a time and this brings me to the next point which i was just covering earlier which is listing groups one way to scale your performance max campaign is by adding more and more products within the same niche and collection very good way to scale and just kind of takes the pressure off of the performance max campaign because now you are giving it a bigger fishing net where it can go into the ocean and find even more fish out in the sea so perfect way to scale just keep on adding more products but the first scaling method and the second scaling method should be done together but it's not complete without the third scaling method which is done directly within the setting so for a performance max campaign as i mentioned you don't really have too much that you can control and that means your scaling opportunity is limited, but there are actually three different ways you can scale your performance max campaigns directly from the settings section. Number one way is through budgets. Of course, you wanna be following the same budget scaling methods I always mention in my other videos. In this case, you wanna be increasing by 10% to 20%, but only do this every seven days. If this were a smart shopping campaign, if this were a standard shopping campaign, I would recommend that you go in and be aggressive, maybe even four to five days, that's fine. But performance max campaign, I highly recommend you do not scale before the seven day period at a minimum. And this is because a performance max campaign is heavily dependent on Google's algorithm. We just don't know what's gonna happen after you increase that budget. So you wanna kinda play it safe, don't go too crazy. I know you wanna scale fast, but just keep it steady to kind of prevent losing any types of optimization and prevent losing that profitability and just scale by 10 to 20% every seven days. So since it has been over seven days, because this campaign, if we go to the overview section, we can see it has been running since June 7th and it started getting results on the third day. So June 9th, we got one sale, then June 10th, two sales, then it kinda went down and that just tells you this is how performance max works. There's gonna be ups and downs. Then after it had enough data, June 14th, four sales all of a sudden and now june 15 and today june 16th one sale each so there are going to be ups and downs just be expecting those but overall the roas is what we care about and in this case the roas is a 5.77 very good roas so that does tell us that it is ready to be scaled and nothing else was done since it was started on around june 7 but what i would do in this case is since the budget is so low i would just increase it by ten dollars until it gets to about a hundred dollar a day budget that's when i would do the 20 percent increments or maybe even 10 percent increments if i'm not too confident but that's one way to scale within the settings section every seven days in addition 
Once you scale with the budget, you will start to notice that your performance max campaign starts to spend more and more money. But if you notice that it starts to spend way too much money now and it's kind of taking a toll on your profitability, you might want to use another scaling method, which is just to kind of set a target CPA. In this case, you have the option of either optimizing for conversions or conversion value. It doesn't really matter. I recommend you do conversions because it's just a better way to go and just set a target CPA. Now, if you have enough data on the performance max campaign, it will recommend to you a target CPA. I do recommend that you do just a little bit above that. So if it's at $33, I recommend you set it at 35 and just kind of increase it based on what it tells you. But if you do decide to go the conversion value route, you can set a target ROAS percentage here. In this case, it will kind of recommend to you something. I do recommend that in this case, you actually go a little bit lower. So for a target ROAS, go maybe 350. This is one way to scale because this is scaling your profits. Now, in almost all the cases, once you do this, it will spend a little bit less, but you will be much more profitable than before. So this is one way to scale if you want to scale mostly your profits. Let's say you're not really worried about profits, you're fine with what it's getting right now. Then in that case, you might want to actually start bringing this number down more and more. So from 350 to 300 to 250 and same thing with the other option. So if it was target CPA and you're doing just fine right now, but it's not spending enough money and you want to scale more, you would lower this target CPA from 35 to maybe 33, then 30 and you can decrease this or increase this by 10% to 20%. So this is one way to scale, which is directly with the bidding. And you only have two bidding options here. Just be very, very direct. In this case, if it's a brand new performance max campaign, I recommend you don't set a target ROAS at all and just leave this box unchecked. This should come later on where you're deeper in the scaling phase. That's why I first covered the budget because this is what you should be scaling first until your profit starts to kind of fluctuate heavily. But let's move on to our third scaling method for a performance max campaign, and that is through countries. Yes, you heard that right, through countries. There is no reason for you to just scale a performance max campaign via just the budget or the bidding because you can launch the performance max campaign for that same collection, especially if you can handle shipping outside to international countries to those different countries. So I recommend a performance max campaign to maybe Canada, UK, at least the top five countries. Once your account has enough data with the main country and with enough data, I mean just about 50 conversions. So this performance max campaign has only about 10 conversions so far. So I'm going to wait for 40 more sales. Once there's 40 more sales, we might end up just launching the performance max campaign for United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, etc. And that's just the best way to go because now the account has enough data as a whole to then use to distribute to these different countries. So even if you haven't really necessarily ran ads to those countries, because the account as a whole has enough data within that niche, it should base in most cases perform well. Of course, there's a good chance it might not perform well, but that's just how it works. So you want to kind of scale via the locations as well. And that's pretty much it to the scaling with a performance max campaign. But hold on, we're not done yet. I know you're super excited to scale that performance max campaign, but you need to understand these few key pointers, which I'm about to tell you about a performance max campaign. So a performance max campaign, because it is heavily invested in Google's algorithm, should be scaled very slowly very steadily do not go overboard scaling a performance max campaign because it, once it de-optimizes it's going to take about two to four weeks even to really get back to the levels it was at originally so you want to give it a bit of time just kind of let it steadily grow up to a greater level let it optimize let it gather data then you can scale over time so expect about a one month to a three month time period to scale it to significant levels but in addition don't just heavily rely on a performance max campaign. I know Google is going all in with the performance max campaign, but you want to have other types of campaigns running with a performance max campaign. This includes search campaigns, dynamic search campaigns, display marketing, discovery campaigns, YouTube, etc. There's a lot of different campaigns you should have running and the benefit of running these with a performance max campaign is that now all of these can kind of come together on the account level, transfer data to each other and grow as a whole. So think of it as a team effort rather than just the individual effort, because essentially before that's what it was with standard shopping campaigns. It just gathered its own data. It just used it by itself and it scaled that way. But a performance max, it kind of needs to go on a broader account level to understand who your ideal audience is, who your ideal customer is, and then show the ads with them. But that is pretty much it to scaling a performance max campaign. Again, I know it's a lot of things that you need to take into account. So if you would rather get help and you're already doing about $30,000 or more in sales per month, 
go on to my website at yourmarketing.com and book a free call with me to see how we can possibly work together to scale your e-commerce brand to the next level. But if you found any type of value in this video, just destroy that like button and destroy that subscribe button and I will see you in my next video.